So Lightburn is the most popular laser software that is out there. It is probably the most powerful and it's also the hardest to learn. In this video, I wanna give you a few tips that I have learned that I really wished I knew at the very beginning that has saved me a ton of time once I figured them out. And not to bury the lead, starting with the number one tip that is honestly the easiest one to implement and that is the fill offset. So I just have a blank project pulled up in Lightburn and I'm just going to drop in a square. So I'm going to draw a quick little square uh, that is, uh, let's make it 50 by 50 millimeters. Uh, and right now you can see I've got this set to fill. Now I want to preview how long this is going to take to do. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to run this at a thousand millimeters per second. Uh, we're going to do it at hundred percent power. Honestly, the power really doesn't matter. And really the speed doesn't matter either um, because we're talking about a difference in settings. So I'm going to come up here to the top. I am going to hit my preview. You can also hit Alt P on a Mac, probably something similar on a PC. Uh, and with our preview window pulled up, um, you can see that we have our preview you and if I hit play you can see how this is going to work so um, this is going to work kind of like your normal printer it's going to go from the bottom up back and forth back and forth you probably have seen this a bunch if you've done anything with lasers especially if you're doing like pictures this is how it's going to do it and the red on the side is like the overshoot the amount of time it's going to slow down and speed up that's going to change depending on your laser all right so that is going to take a total estimated time of 1 minute and 25 seconds now, there's actually another way you can do fills and that is with an offset fill. And the way this one works is just like the offset tool over here. Uh, so let's say I draw a, another box. I'm gonna actually put this one on the black layer and zoom in so we can see what's going on. And then if I select it and hit offset, uh, then if you've used offset before, it's just gonna make that same shape, just offset either inside or outside of your object. So the offset fill pretty much does the exact same thing. It is going to do the initial shape in tier and then offset that towards the center to give you the final design. Uh, and if that doesn't make any sense, here's actually what it looks like with our preview. So I am gonna hit play. It's gonna start off and you can see it actually starts at the middle then slowly works its way out, offsetting by whatever amount you've got set in the settings. But the big thing is going to be the time difference. And actually with this one, if I switch it back over to the fill offset, uh, it's gonna give us a time of 2.49 versus our time of 129. So actually this is gonna take longer. So you're only gonna use this for specific use cases. So, and basically the bigger the design, the more powerful this tool really gets. And I especially find, so let's say I have like a big sign that's about two feet wide. So I think that's like 600-ish uh, millimeters. And I want to do a, a border on the inside. So this black line is gonna be the cut line. And then inside of it, I'm gonna have like a thick black border. So I'm just gonna make an offset for that, just like we've talked about. We're gonna offset by 10, uh, looks good. All right, and then I'm gonna offset this one more time to give me the interior of that border. And again, we're gonna go, uh, let's say 13 millimeters. Cool, and then I'm gonna select those two and then I'm gonna drop them onto a new layer uh, to make that layer our fill layer. So this is gonna be a much more useful use case of how this is gonna work. Uh, to show you the difference, I am gonna turn the output off uh, for my cut line because that's gonna be the same regardless of the way we're doing the fill. So when we hit our preview, we're just gonna see how long this is actually going to take. So. As of right now, it is 31 minutes. And again, if we run it, um, this is gonna run it just like if we were doing an image, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, and now this is much, much bigger, so this is gonna take much, much longer. Now let's flip this over to the offset fill. When we do that, our time has jumped all the way down to eight minutes and seven seconds. Uh, when I first saw the setting, I was like, wait, why have I never done this before? This saves so much time, especially when you're doing use cases kind of like this. And again, if we play it, you can see it's basically just drawing the border around and around and around. So super, super useful. So even if you don't know if it's gonna help, I definitely encourage you guys just to flip it to offset fill, just do a preview and get an idea if you're gonna save time doing it. And basically the bigger that you go and the more time the machine is going to be in the red, and again, the red, um, those are what they call the traversal moves. So just the amount of time it's moving, but not firing. Uh, if you see a lot of red, uh, more than likely if you do offset fill, you're gonna save a lot 
of time. All right, next up, let's talk about saving time in terms of how things are oriented on your artboard. So in this case, I just have a bunch of like squares and rectangles that we are going to cut out. I could totally send this to the machine right now and cut this out, um, but there's gonna be a good bit of waste with the material that is in between all of these objects. So one thing that I wind up doing a ton is uh, selecting everything, coming up here to arrange, uh, then over to distribute, and then you've got these two options, move H together, so move in the horizontal direction together and then move in the vertical direction together. I find the vertical one is super useful. So it's basically gonna take everything and smush it together so the borders overlap. We're gonna do that and you can see that everything now has dropped down. Now this is super useful because you are not gonna be wasting material between those objects. Now a way to speed this up even further is our next tip. And if I go to preview right now and I play this, you can see we're actually doing the same cut twice. So in the case of this bottom square, uh, we're gonna hit that line again. There's actually a setting over here on your uh, laser panel on the optimization settings that you can turn on called remove overlapping lines. Uh, and then you can actually tell the distance that you want the lines to be removed. And a lot of times, and a lot of times that's gonna have to do with the kerf of the beam itself. Um, and I'm just gonna keep this at 0.07, so a little bit thicker. And then I'm gonna hit okay. Now if I go to preview and I run it again, you can see before it would have cut that line again. Uh, instead, that's actually a traverse move. So it does that really quick if I just play this uh, in real time. Uh, and that speeds it up a good bit. So uh, there was that 41 seconds uh, versus if I had that turned off, uh, then this is uh, 50 seconds. So just a few seconds there, but that, but you can but that can definitely add up over time if you have really complex shapes. All right, and next one is like a whole feature set that has been added into Lightburn in a previous version, and they're calling this docking. Uh, so um, if I have all of these selected, uh, and to make sure that it's showing up for you, just come up to window and hit docking, and it's actually gonna be these icons right here. Uh, there's a little arrow, and this little arrow is gonna give you like more settings, but I'm gonna pull this over. Uh, yeah, so it gives me all the settings right there. I'm gonna select everything, and what docking does, it actually docks it to the sides of the art bed itself. So um, this one right here is gonna move everything to the left. As of right now, this is moving it as a group, and it's locking the inner objects. We'll talk about what that is here in a second. But uh, it basically just aligns everything to the left side, then you can align everything to the top side, so then you have it in the top left corner. So depending on how you do your positioning with your laser, maybe you just really like having things locked to certain corners physically on your machine, super easy way to do it. Now, uh, just like we saw earlier, this actually has a lot of extra space. Um, so what you can do is to turn off move as a group, and it's gonna kind of squish everything together into the direction that you want. Um, so if I do two different directions, um, you can see that we have gotten a lot of the extra space out of there. Uh, and I actually find that I wind up doing this, uh, even if I don't want it in that section, that's a really easy way to kind of nest stuff together. I find this is actually a really good way um, to do nesting inside of Lightburn uh, because you also can set uh, the padding. So let me back back out. And let's say that we uh, do need to leave room for some kerf or we actually want material. Uh, I think this is a millimeter. So let's do this at like five, or let's do this at like five millimeters. Uh, and again, move it all over. And there we have our distance of five millimeters uh, between our objects to the left. And now if we go to the top, the same thing is happening. Now to show what lock inner objects is, I'm actually gonna throw in some text. I'm gonna call this docking. Then I'm going to align everything. And then still with lock inner objects turned on, if I move all of this to the left, the whole thing moves to the left as one big object. Um, it's pretty much doing the same thing as if this was like one group. Um, but um, if I did the same thing and I turned that off, it's gonna treat whatever is on the inside as its own thing. Um, so this is all grouped together. So if I do that, now the entire frame, and I think we still have that yeah, five millimeter margin turned on, that's why it's not going the whole way. Let's hit it again. Um, it's gonna go all the way to the edge, and then the text is gonna go all the way to the edge as well. Okay, so we kind of did a quick and dirty version of nesting. Let's talk about proper nesting, meaning you can like reorient your shapes and get the most optimal settings possible. So I brought in some cut files for this machine uh, and you can see it is not optimized whatsoever. So you can definitely like ungroup all these and move these around so you actually have room to fit this within your machine, uh, but there's still going to be a lot of empty space. So um, what you can do if you type in nest and hit nest selected, Lightburn does something 
kind of crazy. And they actually jump you to an open source tool called SVG Nest. And I actually have talked about Deep Nest IO before, which as the nesting tool that I actually really like to use. But Lightbird doesn't have this built in directly, but this free tool is super nice. So this is the tool. I am going to import uh, our design and it's going to bring it in. You can see these are all of the designs we were just looking at uh, inside of Lightburn. Uh, and then what you'll need to do is add in a sheet. So like what is the sheet of material all this is coming out of? So let's say we actually have a pretty big sheet that we can cut this out of that is more or less the size of our work bed. So I'm gonna do about 30 by 20 and hit add and then make sure that this is selected as my sheet right here. Uh, and now it has all of these objects pulled out and uh, you could go in and adjust the numbers as needed and then go ahead and hit start nest. And then it's going to do the actual magic of figuring out how to nest all of these things together. And it's actually gonna be iterative and you're gonna see it do a bunch of different versions of it as it slowly tries to make it better and better and better. And you can kind of just let this run indefinitely. Uh, but you can see even from the very beginning that we already have um, all of our parts placed because there might be time when they're not gonna fit. You can see how much time it's going to save as it's doing more and more versions. So not only is it just like squishing these things together, but it's treating them as entire objects. It can rotate them, put them inside of other things. You can see that's happening right here. Uh, and you're gonna get the best nest possible. And it looks like actually the very first one uh, was at 25 seconds. So we're gonna export that as an SVG. And you can see there are all of our pieces that actually are going to fit on our work bed that then we can go in and run. But there definitely are a few options in here to keep in mind, specifically uh, the space between your parts. So you don't have to use this just with a laser, but I've also used this with CNC's as well. Um, so this winds up being like the width of my bit that I wanna put in there. Uh, but if we're gonna use like remove overlapping lines that we talked about earlier, keep this at zero so the lines actually do touch. All right, another tip when you're dealing with a lot of things and you want to be able to manually move them around the artboard is you can actually auto group things together. All right, so these are parts for a Settlers of Catan board game and I've got a bunch of pieces in here. And when I actually brought these in, um, they were all grouped together. So uh, to be able to do this, make sure everything is ungrouped to start. So I'm gonna select both of these and hit ungroup. And then once I ungrouped everything, um, you can see all of these are individual pieces. So if I was to zoom into this guy, uh, all of these are getting moved around. So if you want all of these pieces to stay together as a single piece, come up here to arrange and hit auto group. You don't actually have to have anything selected to do this. I'm gonna hit auto group. And now if I go in here and select, every single one of these have been grouped together. Uh, and basically the way this is working is if you have an object inside of another enclosed object, it's gonna treat that as one thing. So like text or graphics or whatever inside of something else that you're cutting out is a really common example and something I use a ton to do this. Okay, for our next tip has to do with selection. Uh, this was actually something I was about to do uh, before I recorded this because the yellow on this is actually kind of hard to see, uh, I'm guessing on the video. So I wanna go in here and select all of these borders and change them over to a different layer. Uh, so I could definitely go in here and like hold shift and select all these different things. I can use, even use like the click and drag and get all the stuff, uh, but there's an easier way to do it. All you have to do is hold shift and select the layer. Then everything on that layer, now you can see me moving it around or you can't, um, is selected. So if I wanna jump all that into a new layer, I'm gonna hit the blue layer and you can see we have adjusted everything. So splitting things up by layer um, not only is helpful for the speed and power settings, but you can also kind of treat it as a group as well. If, if you just hold shift, select, and then you've got everything in there to do whatever you need to do with. All right, so the next one has to do with positioning objects to themselves, uh, so like snapping. Uh, and you wanna make sure you actually have snapping turned on to do this. So if you come up here to preferences, then you go over to units and grids. Uh, make sure you've got snap to objects turned on. Um, you can also do snap to grid as well and hit okay. Uh, so what you can do is if you select something and either hold alt on a PC or option on a Mac and then move this around, you can see we've got those blue snapping lines that will allow me to snap this to um, the object. Now it's gonna do this even if you don't hold it, so you can see it's kind of like snapping as it's going around. But I find that a lot of times, especially the edges aren't really gonna work unless you're holding option. Um, and then two, you can also see like what it's snapping to. 
Uh, then let's see, also if I zoom all the way out, um, it should do it to the work bed. Yeah, so there is the very center as well. Super helpful, super helpful if you wanna snap objects to each other. Now another tip that kind of goes with that is you can actually pull in guidelines that are always on uh, with your work bed. So this is something I actually do a lot on like Photoshop or Illustrator, is if you come up to the edges, um, you can see you have that little like line with a, I don't even know what, like a heartbeat in between it. Uh, if you click, if you click and drag, we're going to get an orange tool line. So I'm going to let this go. And when I did that, it actually created a tool layer. And if you remember here at the very bottom, I know it's kind of hard to see. Uh, we actually have two different tool layers. And uh, the unique part about tool layers is they're never exported. So if I go to the preview, you can see that line, uh, nothing is going to get exported. So these literally are just for tools. So you can use these as templates and anything can be on the tool layer. So like I can draw a square, all this kind of stuff and then drop it on the tool layer as well um, but so the line is just that but just an easy way to do it from the sides uh, because once you've got that selected um, then you can use that to position as well again if I'm holding um, option so then it's locking to that line whether I want to do it on the center or the top or the bottom really easy to do and you can do vertical lines as well again same process pull it from the left um, or from the right and there you have a line that is locked in the space. All right, the very last tip is going to open you up to a bunch of new things. Uh, if there's anything on here you see and you're like, I have no idea what that does, instead of just like Googling it and trying to figure out what it does, if you hit F1 while you're hovering over it, so like I'm over the select escape, I hit F1, it's going to pop open um, basically the help docs within Lightburn specifically to that tool. And not everything is gonna have documentation for it. So I think this like new cut tool they just added in version 1.7, yeah, that doesn't have it. But a lot of things will, uh, and you can get a lot more information about how it works within their docs as well. And if you're brand new to Lightburn, I have a full tutorial that walks you through the basics in about 30 minutes, and we're gonna jump into that right now. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys. Feel all set, smooth and clean, no more gaps, laser me.